If you haven't heard yet, the JetBrains AI Assistant is now free to use in all versions of Rider 2025.1 and above. This new version supports multi-file edit. It lets you apply snippets from chat. It has web search and it has improved AI context awareness, which means you can use RAG in the same manner you would do with Cursor. We're gonna look at all those things and look at how you can build your own prompts inside of Rider. Let's get into it. Some of you will notice that I'm not using the classic Rider UI plugin that I usually use. Instead, today I'm going to use the regular UI because there's a feature available here that's not available in the classic UI. On the right side of the window, we can see the icon for the AI chat. If we click it, it'll open up the AI assistant and we can start to using it. You'll also notice there's an identical icon on the top menu bar. This is for something different. This is for the AI Assistant widget. This widget is useful because you can tell at a glance which license you're using, and it will also show you your quota, how many days left in the quota period, and the blue bar, which gradually depletes itself, shows how much usage you have left. Now, if you have Dot .ultimate or the all products pack, which I do, the pro version of the AI Assistant is included. For other licenses, you get to try AI Pro for 30 days, and after that you have to buy its own license. Of course, that's only for the Pro features. Things like code completion are always free for everybody all the time. So at some point, if you really like using this, it might be worth considering moving up to Dot .ultimate or the All Products Pack, depending on what you're doing. And don't forget that for this channel, we have a discount code for some JetBrains annual licenses. You can find out more about that on Discord. Now, just in case some people are watching this in the future, I'm just going to open up the about page and show which version of Rider this actually is. This is the new one that was built on May 7th. So this is Rider 2025.1.2. The features I'm going to be talking about today are included in all versions of 2025.1. Now, before we go further, I want to say one more thing about the quota. Obviously, that progress bar is not very transparent about how much usage you actually have. If you have a tool like everything, you can search for this file, AI Assistant Quota Manager 2.xml. Let's open this up in Rider. Inside this document, you can be able to find all the numbers for your current usage and what your actual maximum amount of tokens are. It's a little bit hard to parse through this, but you can see that I have a max of 2 million tokens and I've used about 40,000 of them. But you know what? I've got the AI Assistant open. Why don't we just ask it to give me a summary? So I want to know how much of my quota have I used? Now, it should give me a concise summary of the information inside of this document. Now, if you happen to be using the free version of AI Assistant, it would be great if you could post what the maximum amount of tokens are included with the free version so that everybody watching this video can see that. I've always been on the pro version, so I have no idea. Now, it's my understanding that the pro version has roughly 10x the number of tokens as the free version. And everything that we're going to look at today is also available in the free version. One of the really nice things about the AI chat window is that it has this features link where you can come through here and look at a summary of all the main features of the AI assistant. So, for example, if you want to start creating your own prompt library, there's a little summary of how you would do that. We're going to take a closer look at this in a little bit. Now, I use Cursor a lot at work, and one of the things I like about it is that you can add markdown files with various instructions, and you can have Cursor rules. Well, we can do the same kind of thing here with the AI Assistant. First of all, I'm going to switch the mode here. It's in chat mode currently, but I'm going to switch to edit mode, which is still in beta. Now, chat is great if you just want to talk about what's going on in this file or even multiple files, and it will let you apply changes to those files one by one, whereas edit mode is more powerful. In this mode, context is gathered automatically, but we can add or remove things manually if we need to. It'll let us apply changes across multiple files. So I'm actually going to open a new markdown file, and I'm just going to call it guidelines.md. Now at the top of the file, I'll paste in a header and a generic description of what I'm going to put in the guidelines, and then I'll start breaking it down into sections. So maybe I'll have one section, for example, maybe for mono behaviors. So why don't we make one guideline just for a demonstration? The guideline will say that for every mono behavior, we want to make sure that we have a no op on destroy method included. If you're used to using cursor, this next part will be very familiar. We can use at notation to specify the file that we want to work on. And let's tell the agent to update the file according to our guidelines. Now you can see it already has guidelines.md here in the context, but you could also add these instructions using at notation in the same way. In edit mode, the AI assistant will try to gather as much context as it thinks is relevant. After it's done thinking, it'll open a new window here where you can preview your changes. You can choose to accept these or just keep going. 
There's a few things I don't like about this. First of all, I like all my no-op comments to just say no-op. I also never include the private keyword if it's the default access modifier. Now, both those changes are simple, but I'd like that to be part of my guidelines all the time. So not only do I want to update this file, but I want to update my instructions as well. Now sending this to the AI agent should update both files. You can see in the chat, it'll start with the example.cs file and then move on to updating the guidelines. When it's all finished, we'll have the options to discard all or accept all. And just below those two buttons, we'll see a list of all the files that were updated. We also have a new tab that's been opened that shows all of the chat changes. And here we can navigate between all of the changes that were made. We can choose to accept each one individually, or of course we can just accept all of them. So I'm happy with this for now. So I'm gonna use the accept all button in the chat pane. That will dismiss our chat changes tab and apply all of the changes that we made. Now let's talk a little bit more about adding context. When we're in edit mode, the AI assistant is going to try to build a context based on files from your project that it considers to be relevant. However, you can start adding all kinds of other things to your context. One of those things is a set of instructions, not unlike what we just built into a markdown file. You can see here that it says my instructions are empty. And if I click on them, it'll open up the settings window. This is a prompt in the prompt library under the general section called chat instructions. Here you can add instructions you would like applied to every single chat. If this isn't empty, it'll get added to the start of every new chat. And of course you could explicitly include it anytime. So you could add instructions in here that you want applied all the time. So maybe I want all my using statements ordered alphabetically. For me personally, I prefer having these segregated into markdown files, but this is definitely an option if you want something applied to every chat. So again, you can find this in the prompt library. If we come back down to our chat window and I click on the plus icon again, we have a few other options. One is to grab the current file that we have open. So that would add example.cs to the context. You can also get the current file with the hashtag this file. On top of that, there are lots of other options. From the plus menu, you can continue to add more files, you can add symbols, and you can also add commits. And finally, you can add context using the UI. With this option, you can just start selecting different tabs. You can get your AI chat window, the open file, you can grab any of the tabs from the top. Basically anything that you can see, you can add into the context. I can even select this chat window that I've been typing in. And you'll see that I'll add a new bit of context here that says AI assistant and it has a little pencil icon. Now, I don't know if that's beneficial in any way. Probably not. Let's remove it. Actually, let's make a clean slate because I want to take a look at slash commands. If you type a slash here in the window, you'll start seeing all of the available commands. For example, refactor. If you had a snippet of code selected in the editor, this would start a refactoring job for that. And one of my favorite slash commands is slash web. Here we can add a reference to any internet document. And then we can add any instructions on what we want the AI assistant to do with that. So I'm going to say, help me implement support for a character controller in this file. Furthermore, I'm going to make sure that it uses my guidelines when implementing this code. So let's fire this off and see what happens. It's actually quite fast to do a little search, but then it's going to have to do some thinking on how it's going to do the implementation. Once it's ready, it'll provide an explanation of what it's going to do and then start making updates to the relevant files. One thing that I do at work, especially if I'm going to make changes across many files, is I make sure that it outlines the steps for me and allows me to approve the steps before it starts implementing code. So here we can see the changes that it's made in green. Again, we can choose to accept all or we can do a little review here. An AI assistant is not a silver bullet and they do make a lot of mistakes. They even delete code sometimes. So my advice, review every change and make sure it's correct. So here I can see one thing that I would have added and that's a require component statement. So you can tell the AI assistant that's what you want and let it make that change for you. You could potentially also add this to your guidelines. So let's give it a moment to think about that. Once the change is in place, I think we can approve this. Optionally, if you want, you can also confirm where it's getting its information from. I told it specifically to go to the character controller documentation on unity3d.com. However, sometimes if it can't find what it's looking for there, it will look for other sources. If we go over to chat mode, things are similar, but a little bit different. Here you can see we have a little globe icon. This is just a little convenience that does nothing more than add the slash command to your prompt. You'll also see we have this function codebase. Codebase does the same thing that edit mode does when it tries to find relevant context. 
turning this on lets the assistant add relevant code that it thinks is appropriate for what you're asking about. Now, one more thing I want to take a look at today, and that is adding your own custom prompts. Let's suppose I have this simple player class and I want to do a refactoring so that it has its own builder. In either chat or edit mode, you can start adding your instructions for your new prompt. So I want to refactor this class into the builder pattern by making the parent class constructor private, creating a nested public subclass for the builder, adding fluent methods for each property, and then including a final build method to return the parent class. I want to keep the code concise, clear, easy to read, and I want to make sure that the builder resets itself so that I can reuse it and cache it. Finally, I'll make sure that it's going to use my guidelines markdown file. Now let's kick this off and make sure that it's going to do what I think it's going to do. It'll have to think about it for a little bit, but in a second we should see some results. What I want to do is create a prompt that I'll be able to reuse on any class in the future. So let's take a look at what the output is here. Does it look right? Is it what I want? Do I need to refine it at all? Normally I would, and prompts are things that you can refine as many times as you want. You can make them better and better and better. For now, I think this is okay, but I'm not going to apply these changes. Instead, I'm going to come all the way up to the top of my chat where I initially entered my prompt, and I'm going to select Save Current Prompt. This is going to open up my prompt library. You can get here from settings, but this is a little bit more efficient because this is just going to take the prompt that you wrote and apply that into a prompt that you can save. Let's give this prompt a proper name. I'll just call it Builder Pattern. I'm also going to check the wait for additional user input after invoking because we can't have a reference to a specific file in here. So I'll remove that reference to our guidelines. Now I'll save this prompt, discard all these potential changes, and we're going to try this out. Now, if I come into AI Actions, down here I have a reference to my new prompt, the Builder Pattern. This gives us an option to select a code fragment because you can use the variable dollar sign selection to specify a specific code snippet. I'm going to change to edit mode and then I'm going to add a reference to my guidelines file. And that's it. Let's try it out. In a perfect world, this will give us the exact same output as we got when we were refining the prompt earlier. If not, then we're probably missing some instructions or not being clear enough about what we want. You can always go back into the prompt library from the settings menu and make any adjustments you need. Okay, here we go. It's done thinking, outlines the steps, and it's starting to write some code. And here we go. So a cursory glance at this. Yeah, it's exactly the same as before. Of course, this is very simple and your prompts and instructions can get much, much longer. That's one of the reasons I prefer to use markdown files as additional input. And I do the same thing with cursor. When you're happy with this, you can have the AI write documentation. You can have it explain how to use what it just wrote. You can have it add citations and so on. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask, which one is better? Well, I think it depends on the context. For me, when I'm building something in Unity, the most convenient IDE to use is Rider. When I'm at work, sometimes Cursor is more useful, and not really because Cursor is better, but because Cursor supports VS Code extensions. And that's another pro to writing your instructions in Markdown. You can use them anywhere and you can share them with your teammates. And of course, these simple examples that I've shown today are just the basics. Once you start building really good instruction files, really good guidelines, and you have some solid prompts, this kind of thing can be a real time saver. But once again, I'm just going to stress, these AI tools do not replace you as a developer. You have to continue to check the output every time. It's still your responsibility what code you check into the repository. But with that said, I think that's enough of an introduction to the AI Assistant in JetBrains Rider 2025. Don't forget there's a discount code available for channel subscribers on the Discord. New video every Sunday on an advanced or intermediate game development topic. So hit the subscribe and the bell and like the video if you learned something new today. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.